So in the educational session, the whole session in this meeting was dedicated to optimising treatment strategies for myelofibrosis because this is a very challenging area of clinical practice. One, we have ruxolitinib, which is a very effective drug for patients. So in the first talk, we focused on how do you optimise ruxolitinib for your patient? How do you manage side effects like anemia, thrombocytopenia, considering adding danazole, adding erythropoietin, adding hydroxyurea, when to move the patient to transplant, for example, and then also discuss data with other emergent JAK inhibitors, such as, for example, fedratinib, momolotinib, which is currently available in several countries via compassionate use, and also pacritinib, which is available in North America as an FDA-approved drug. So thinking about segmenting those agents, and in that context, it's really important to think about what the latest data is, and particularly we're now seeing emergent later data for momolotinib coming from the Momentum trial. So, first of all, um, data looking at um, patients who swapped over from danazole, which was the control arm in the study, to receive momolotinib, that we saw responses in those patients. And then this updated analysis also allowed us to look at longer term safety events. Are we still seeing almost no levels of neuropathy? Are there any emergent concerns? And the data is very reassuring. And then finally, also a really interesting look because if our listeners remember, in the past we have shown from the Simplify studies that those patients who achieve transfusion independence, that is a surrogate marker for overall survival for patients. And really interestingly, that data is also sort of ringing true now from the Momentum studies that those patients who attained transfusion independence had a survival benefit. Interestingly, underneath that, those patients who are transfusion dependent but ultimately require less transfusions also have a non-significant but at least a trend towards a better survival as well. So that might be also a way of knowing when your patient's doing well on momolotinib other than of course the burden of transfusions which are significant.